<laughs> Perfect. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. Welcome back to another episode of Thrifty Gaming Pickups here on the second channel. Yes, I did say second channel. For anybody who does not know, this is a series I like to do on my second channel where I hang out with my dog, Lily, right here, and it's just super low-key, um, hardly even any editing to it, and it's just casual enough to the point where it's like I literally sit here on the floor, hang out with Lily, talk about some games that I picked up for, you know, good deals at good places, whether it's yard sales, thrift shops, game shops, um, garage sales, whatever it may be. Um, or even just standard stores as well to friends. There's kind of a little bit of a mix of everything with this. Um, but either way, this is where I just hang out, talk with you all, and show the different gaming deals that I've picked up. Now, oh my goodness, Lily, you are being a professional cutester. My God, okay, you're gonna get a treat for that. I also just get to hang out here and give Lily my dog treats. Now, I did say this is on my second channel, so if you want something more related to video game console modding with more editing and all that fun stuff, uh, my main channel, Mr. Mario 2011, will be linked down below in the description. Lily's making a little bit of a mess here, but it's all good. But either way, what we can do for this episode is uh, really just get right into it here. And I will say right off the bat, with all that stuff right there, it does have something in common. Everything, actually, yeah, yeah, everything I'm going to be showing you all, except for the dog, obviously, I picked her up like five years ago, uh, everything is from Canada. Everything is from Canada, except her, of course, as I said. Uh, let's go ahead and sit down and get right into this. Hey, Lily, you can like move over a li actually, you don't even need to move over that much, it's fine. You can just like hang out right here while we uh, go over all the stuff. That sound good? Oh my goodness, you are making the white balance on here go a little bit crazy because you're like, Okay, there, it's starting to pick up your details and everything. There we go. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and get right into everything here. So, what am I going to show? Well, first of all, let me even explain why the hell I was in Canada. Uh, good reason, I would say. My girlfriend lives in Canada, so it's been a bit since I've been able to visit, but I did visit here recently, and uh, I decided to go to a few places and pick up a few things. Now, I'd say... Let's go with some of the first things I picked up. Uh, I ended up going over to a thrift shop when I was up there, and uh, I will be saying the prices for the most part in um, US dollars, but also, well, Canadian dollars, but then really anything if I don't fully convert it. Because of the current conversion rate, at least while I was up there, take anything in Canadian dollars and discount it by 30%, and that's going to be the conversion in American dollars. So, either way, uh, I end up getting this here, which, uh, this was from a local thrift shop. Lily's going to give it a little bit of a sniff test. Um, but this is Tomb Raider Definitive Edition on PlayStation 4. Now, I absolutely love this game. Uh, I played it primarily on Xbox 360, I think at least twice. I think I have it on PC, digitally, of course. And I've actually rented it, and I played it on PS4. Uh, this is year ago shortly after it came out when I had a Gamefly subscription and uh, my fondest memory of it is actually playing it at the time. Uh, I was in college, just got the PS4 pretty recently and it was like perfect timing because I got the PS4, end up getting this game uh, through rental and then uh, there was such a bad snowstorm that college classes were canceled which is pretty rare. I don't know the age demographic of who exactly is going to be watching this, but if you're of the younger crowd, like you're in school, K through 12, um, inclement weather days in college, normally it has to be something pretty bad for them to cancel college classes, and they did, and not only just one day, it was like two, maybe even I think it was three days in a row, which was unheard of. So pretty much I was just stuck in my apartment, snowed in, playing Tomb Raider. It was actually a fantastic experience. So that's my main memory of this here. You can also tell that this is Canadian because uh, I did find this out. It does have this in, of course, English and French. But I found out recently, actually on my last trip there, that all items that are sold in Canada have to have uh, English and French if you want to like sell them in Canadian stores and all that, which I did not know about. So that was interesting to see. Uh, either way, as you can see from the price tag here, it was $10, which is a little more than I would have paid normally. Um, but not only I've been wanting this game, but then when you take the discount into effect, um, 
end up being you know about seven dollars maybe even 750 us once you convert it just because of you know how everything is kind of fluctuating in regards to uh conversion rates so for either way for about seven us dollars the equivalent of that i was like you know what i want to add this to my collection um i think i have the other two on ps4 i know i have the second one don't remember if i have the third one but either way i really like the first one did not own it on ps4 until now so i finally have that uh on another trip there i also ended up same canadian trip but uh different um how do i say uh different uh thrift shop trip. I ended up going there like two or three times. Uh, but I end up finding these Wiimotes, which seem to be in pretty good shape for the most part. Uh, it's cool because they have the slip covers on them. They are the, I guess, they're official Nintendo. They are the Mario limited edition ones. Well, at least one of them that has uh, Lily's interest. This one is a Mario edition. This one just seems to be a red one, so not a special edition here, but they match pretty closely. Uh, either way, uh, they also have the Wii Motion Plus inside of them. So these are like the optimal controllers that you want to get, and they work. They actually had batteries in them. I checked them, they do work, but then I just threw out the batteries because I don't want to keep batteries in these long term, and you know, I have batteries at home, so I'll just pop them in whenever I want to use them. Uh, either way, I want to say these were $4.99 each. Pretty sure that was the price on their own. Oh, it looks like, yep. Another difference there, just, you can tell. Yeah, this is just a standard red one. This is a special edition Mario one, so cool. Uh, but either way, if I can find some cheap Wiimotes that are working first party in good shape, I'm more than happy to do that. Not even any battery corrosion either, which is really nice as well too. So either way, I paid, you know, $10 Canadian for these, and so about, you know, $7 US for the pair. Uh, now I end up going to a game shop while I was there as well too, and I end up getting nothing but PSP stuff. So I end up getting all these games here, which I don't remember the prices on. I'm going to have to double check these. Oh, Lily, you sniffed it. All right, I had to find the receipts for these here. I remember the case, but uh, the games, I didn't quite remember how much I was paying for them. Yes, Lily, can I help you? Okay. Thanks. Uh, so the cool thing is all of these are complete, thank goodness, but uh, I end up getting Ape Escape on the loose, which I thought I had this one, but nope, I have the other Ape Escape game. Uh, this one was $15 Canadian, so, you know, just under $12 US. Uh, end up getting Fat Princess, uh, Fistful of Cake, which I have never played this game here, uh, but this was... $15 as well too, so about the same price on that, reduce it down just under 12 US. And then uh, Pixel Junk Monsters Deluxe, which I've never played this either. $10, as you can see on the stickers there, those ones are accurate, uh, but $10 for these ones, uh, well this one right here, this single one, uh, and then so about 7 US. So uh, that's, you know, fair prices for those, at least at a game shop. And then I also started looking at um, cases as well too, because they kind of just had a bin full of cases, and I end up seeing this. Uh, this is a case, this is actually the first PSP case that I got. Uh, when I got my first PSP, uh, I remember I had picked up that version. I ended up deciding to get this case. And I think this case was like 20 or $25 new, like in US dollars back in the day. And it is a solid case, man. It is solid. It is for the PSP 1000. Um, it fits snugly in there. It's great. It doesn't hold any UMDs. It doesn't hold, hold any extra uh, memory sticks, but I didn't need it for that. I just needed something strong for the case, uh, well, for the console. And I have on my other case, I mean, I have taken it around with me. I put it in my pocket, put it in my backpack. I was in middle school at the time when I got my PSP and I took it everywhere with me. Uh, the PSP is still in pretty solid shape, but it's like I've even accidentally, heaven forbid, I have dropped it at least a couple times in this case, taking it overseas with me all over the place. This is a great case. This is like, I don't really like Logitech for reasons that I'm not really gonna get into here, but this is a good Logitech product that I very much like. Even back in the day, um, because this case was kind of the, one of the standard PSP ones, it, granted it's not, you know, first party one, it's not one that's endorsed by Sony, uh, but it was enough that a lot of people had them. So people even made um, themes that you could 
create for this case. Like you could print out uh, top themes, bottom themes, and then you would print them out, you would cut them, and you would put them on the top and on the bottom here if you wanted to. Uh, so I remember even growing up, like I had a, I don't have them anymore, but I had like a Family Guy one, I had a Grand Theft Auto San Andreas one, and I got a lot of compliments on them as well too. There was a third one I have, but I never used it because those were the only two that I used. Um, either way, that is to say, I saw this case, got very nostalgic. I'm like, you know what? I can probably pick this up easily online or something, but I'm right here right now. Plus, I know this case is great. So I had my sights on this one and another one. And when I brought them up, the guy said, yeah, these cases are 10 bucks each, but if you're gonna get two, I'll sell them to you for $9 each. And I was like, eh. I only really want the one, so I mean, if they were cheaper, sure, but whatever. I just want one, so that's fine. Uh, so ten dollars Canadian for this, which end up being, you know, about seven dollars U.S. Um, can you find it cheaper other places? Probably, but also, I really like this case. So there's that whole big thing gushing about a PSP case. <laughs> uh, lastly, I got some newer stuff here as well too, which are. Not as thrifty, I guess, but we'll see what's going on. That one's not even, ga it's kind of gaming related, actually. I guess you could spin some of the stuff to be gaming related. Let's go ahead and just get into this here. So, uh, you know, I'm actually going to go backwards on these Switch games here because I've got three Switch games. Uh, so first of all, I end up getting uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5. This is the Steelbook Edition, which is really cool. It doesn't come with anything on the inside, uh, but the Steelbook is super nice, super awesome. This is a really cool looking release here overall. Uh, now, from what I know, even for a lot of people, they had actually uh, just even pre-ordered the regular edition and the Steelbook edition was a completely free upgrade. So that's a nice bonus on there. Um, but I actually overpaid for this here. I do know this goes on sale pretty regularly, but I'll explain why I overpaid for it through a trade. So this is not going to be a thrifty gaming pickup, but I guess maybe it'll be a little cute story. I don't know. So one of the last times I was visiting, my girlfriend and I, we were in a EB Games up there and she had pointed this out and she said, oh yeah, Shin Megami Tensei, I've pre-ordered that already. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and she even said like she wanted to get the big collector's edition that has a bag and a music CD and some other stuff. It's a big, like cool chonker edition of this. Uh, but she said, you know, I wanted to pre-order it, but by the time I could pre-order it, they were all sold out. So I had to get the regular edition, but I get a steel book, which is nice. So she typically looks on the bright side of things and I was like, ah, oh, you know, that's disappointing, but whatever, I get it. So apparently the collector's edition of this sold out like that. That wasn't a good snap. Like that. Um, it sold out super fast. So at one point, we kind of do a few things where like we'll kind of accumulate stuff that we're going to give to each other if we want to get things for each other, if we want to pick something up. And then when we see each other, you know, we gift it to each other exchange at that point. So this is one of the gifts that I didn't tell her about. At one point, I want to say it was in like January of this year or something like that. It was very early in the year. Randomly, at one point on Amazon, the collector's edition went back up. For sale but it was on pre-order so it's like you pay for it or you can pre-order it even though the game had already come out um, but you have to wait a few weeks or a few months to get it and i said whatever that's all good at least i'll lock in my pre-order they only did that restock one time and i don't think it was an amazon exclusive um, but either way i knew she didn't have that version so i pre-ordered it and i had an idea in mind end up getting it a few months later, I sat on it, and then I brought that big thing up with me when I came to visit. Either way, at one point when I saw her, I asked, hey, uh, Shin Megami, can I try that game out? Because I've been wanting to try this one. She said, sure, and uh, you know, she just handed me this version right here. And then I said, okay, hear me out. Um, I do want to try this out, but I have an idea. Would you trade for this? And she asked, well, for what? And I told her, hold on. And then I went and I came back and I brought the collector's edition out. And I said, straight trade, I'll trade you my collector's edition that's brand new sealed and everything for your steelbook edition. And she was really happy to see it. She was surprised and everything. And the cool thing is this actually comes inside of the collector's edition. So it's not like one of those situations like, I'm thinking like Halo 3, for example, where it's like the standard version, the 
collector's edition and the legendary edition all have different versions of halo 3 technically the disc i the disc and all that is the same but i'm talking like the cover arts the case all that stuff it's different it wasn't one of those situations there uh so she was happy with that of course she accepted there but then i told her about pre-ordering it and she said yeah i found out about that restock but again i i couldn't get to it in time so i said don't worry i, I got to it in time for you i just didn't tell you until now uh, so that is how I overpaid for the Steelbook edition of Shin Megami Tensei 5, but that's, you know, also a gift thing. But either way, I have this in my collection now, which is cool to see. Uh, next up, I also end up getting for myself here, and this is also a different one of those situations I talked about, uh, Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, the Golden Country. Now, some people who know about this, uh, they might be a little surprised to see this here that I was able to grab a copy of it. Uh, if you don't know about this, I can explain it a little bit. Uh, there's Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and then there is Torna, which is an expansion. Now, this expansion ended up getting not only a digital release, but also a physical separate release. Uh, this does not contain Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This only contains the Torna expansion pack. I guess you can kind of put it as something like that. Um, it's its own. It is an expansion, but it is a standalone expansion. There we go. We'll make some more sense of that. Um, so, I remember when this came out, it sold for like 40 US dollars. And then it started going on sale. And I remember it specifically going on sale. And I did not pick it up because I said, you know what? Um, I haven't even played Xenoblade Chronicles 2 yet. I'm working through the first one. Uh, whenever I get to this, I'll be good. I'm going to wait to pick it up. Well, this is one of those games that it didn't really get that many pressings. It didn't sell super well, but it sold well enough to sell out, I guess. And then the price skyrocketed. It skyrocketed on it. I don't know where it's at now, but you can look it up and it's definitely over 40 US dollars. I know that in a typical sense. Um, so apparently uh, this is one thing that not too many people know about, but some distributors have taken advantage of. I know GameStop did this. I don't know how you do this. So if anyone's asked me how, I don't know how, but apparently um, if you fulfill certain requirements, you as a business can actually do repressings of certain games. Uh, GameStop was found out to be doing that years ago where they did repressings of uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii, Xenoblade Chronicles, the first one on the Wii, and uh, what was the other game? Uh, not Cave Story. Cubic Ninja on the 3DS. Uh, and the reason why people kind of figured this out is because people were noticing at one point all those games, those three games that I mentioned years ago, those three games uh, were hard to find. They were in demand, and some of them, like the two of them there, you know, Metroid Prime Trilogy, it's a good release, and people wanted it. So it was hard to find. Uh, same thing with Xenoblade Chronicles. It was a late release. It was a good game. People bought it, held on to it. They weren't selling it. So the price increased on there as well too. Cubic Ninja was an absolutely worthless game and was not a good game either. Uh, in terms of the game itself was not great and the value I'm talking about, like this game was in like the bargain bin for like five bucks and no one would touch it until uh, Smealum did his magic with uh, Ninja Hacks on there and it allowed you to use that game is an entry point to run homebrew on the 3ds in a pretty affordable way at that point the demand for the game skyrocketed and therefore it went up in price now the reason why i'm saying gamestop here the reason why i'm mentioning that is because gamestop did something a little sneaky with those three games at one point people started noticing that there were a lot of used pristine condition copies of those games showing up in GameStop years later. It was only at GameStop, they were only used, and it was those three games. It was Metroid Prime Trilogy, um, Cubic Ninja on the 3DS, and Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii. And at first people were picking them up because it's like, oh, hey, a used copy of this. This is never shown, and it's in pristine condition. But then a lot of people started noticing, like all over the US, like, hey, have you all noticed that only GameStop is getting used copies of these in pristine condition recently all over the US. 
And essentially, people had done their research and they found out that GameStop was doing something kind of shady. Uh, they had gone through, it's not like they were bootlegs. They pretty much went through all the official means. They were able to be allowed to do repressings of these games. So they got those three games repressed brand new. But what they would do is they would then take those games, they would open them up, and they would sell them as used because the used prices on them were so high. For example, Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii was selling selling for like $90 used. So they were taking a brand new game but selling it at a used price and not openly saying that they were the ones who repressed it. So there, there's the whole backstory on there. The point is, uh, this is a lot less shady here, but there is a Canadian company that I didn't know of called PNP Games. I believe there might be one other one who is selling it, but I'm pretty sure it was PNP Games. Uh, PNP Games, PNP, uh, like in as in Nintendo, uh, PNP Games ended up randomly doing a reissue of this, but they were a lot more transparent about it. Like they said like, hey, yeah, we're working on this. We do have a limited reissue of Torna. So if you want to pick it up, you can buy it through us. Um, I had seen it there. I didn't want to really pay for shipping and all that to the US and I didn't mind waiting. So that's where one of those things came about as well too. It helps to have a Canadian girlfriend. Pretty much I just asked her, hey, can I pay for this and just send it to your place and use your address and then I see, next time I see you I get the game, which she was all for. So I wanna say I paid, it wasn't very thrifty, I'll say that. I wanna say I paid like 50 or 55 US for this. I wanna say it was something like that. Um, but either way, that is, uh, hopefully you learned something with the lineage and everything of how shady GameStop can be and how some repressings can happen as well too. Seriously, I, I'm not kidding about that. The whole thing, look that up, like the reissuing of GameStop reissuing those three games, Xenoblade Chronicles on Wii, Metroid Prime Tr Trilogy on Wii, and Cubic Ninja on 3DS. I'm not kidding. Look those up. That is a thing that happened. <laughs> but either way, PMP Games was able to do that as well too. So that's all good. Uh, this last game here, this is actually a thrifty one, right? Um, a thrifty accent, I guess you can say. Now, I absolutely love Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Um, randomly picked it up when I was a kid on the Genesis. Still have that same copy, complete in box and everything. Had no idea about the game. Absolutely loved it. Still love it to this day. Great game. I had no idea Ghoul Patrol was a sequel to it. Um... If you didn't know that either, it's because the game is not very good. Sorry, not sorry. Either way, Zombies Ate My Neighbor, fantastic. I saw this, uh, that Limited Run was going to be doing this pack. I just got excited for the first one. I was like, yes, I need that injected into my veins. Um, so I was planning on picking it up. Now, I've kind of slowed down on picking things up directly from Limited Run games because I like to pick them up through Best Buy just because I don't really mind waiting. Um, and also with Best Buy, I can get more reward points and sometimes I can even get them on discounts as well too. So, I held off on getting this and it kind of hurt me because I really, really wanted this. But I did not buy it through Limited Run games. I waited, I waited, I waited for Best Buy to put it up on sale. And I was about to pull the trigger. Then my girlfriend got her copy of it because she ordered it through Limited Run Games. Um, and this is actually, she ordered it way long before. So this is before, you know, she was going to send it to me. Because at this point, I've even said the same agreement with her. I've said, hey, look, if there's anything in the U.S. you want to get, just because like shipping to, from U.S. to Canada just increases so much. I kind of told her the same thing. I said, you know, if there's something, just ship it to me. Uh, and then I'll just bring it with me, whatever it might be. Uh, so, with games as well too, especially when a game like shipping this within the US might be five, six bucks, shipping it to Canada is gonna add another 20 bucks to it. So, uh, either way, before uh, we did all that, she had already pre-ordered it, it was all good. She rarely orders stuff through Limited Run. Um, but then the oddest thing happened. She got her copy of the game, right? And then she got another. And she only paid for one. <laughs> um, so what happened was she kind of offered it to me. She's like, hey, um, I got a second copy because at one point I said I was going to, I think she told me at one point and then she was, because I was 
going to pick up a copy on my own. Um, but she was just like, oh, you know, I got a second copy here. I'll, I'll run it by friends if they want it. None of her friends wanted it. And then she said, before I bought mine, she's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, do, do you want my copy? Like, you can have it if you want it. And I was even like, hey, are you sure? Because, like, I don't know if you want a second copy for whatever reason. Because you're a collector as well, too. Uh, what might be. Or even, hey, if you want to sell it, you know, hey, capitalism, awesome. Uh, but she said, no, 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 no. Um, it's yours if you want it. I said, sure. I, I actually want this game. And it ends up saving me, you know, 35 bucks right there. So I guess a little bit of a happy accident. Uh, I end up getting Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol for free. Thanks to... A shipping accident, I guess? I don't know. It was weird. Uh, both of them were in her name. They were to her address, everything, but she only paid for one copy. She only had one invoice. It was just a happy accident. Uh, if someone else got their copy misplaced, I really hope they got that sorted. <laughs> but yeah, so I ended up getting that. Now, the last thing here, um, the same day, I end up getting this. It was funny because um, pretty much like there was one day I was over at her place, I was in her room, and that's when she said, oh, uh, I forgot to give this to you. So she gave me this copy, but then she just started showing me like other things of her collection, all that. And then this is why it's like, damn it, she is a keeper. Because the same day she gave me this, she gave me a few other items, which is like, damn it, I am amazed that you have these and that you have multiple of them and that you're giving them to me because these are actually items that I have real life use cases for. And if I can't use now, I will actually need them in the future for different things. Um, and they're very much, if you know me personally, they're very much items that are very much me. <laughs> but first of all, of course, she ended up giving me this, which I was super happy about. But then the other items she was giving me, uh, only one of them is really directly gaming related, but I'm going to show you. Um, this is just one of the packages that she got some stuff in. So I'm going to open this up with one hand, which is uh, not easy to do. I'll, I'll tell you that. There we go. There we go. But I did it. I prevailed. Here we go. It might not seem like that much, but... First of all, right here, a uh, Bluetooth USB adapter, which is pretty self-explanatory. You hook this up to your computer, it gives you the capability of hooking things up through Bluetooth. Super useful for desktops, for example. Now, I've had one or two of these adapters. I don't know where they're at. <laughs> I thought I had them in my electronics grab bag. I don't know where they're at at this point. So I was shocked that she had like one or two of these and she asked like, oh yeah, like, do you need one? I said, yes, I actually need one. I truly, unironically actually need one. Like I can have real world use cases for this. So she gave me one. I was super happy for this. This is like one of the most unsuspecting things that you would never really think of. But I was like, no, I actually need one of these. But it was never a thing where it's like, oh, it's missing, but I don't need it enough that I'd really care to replace it right now. But there we go. Uh, the last time I really needed one of these was when I was actually uh, syncing up Joy-Con controllers to my computer and changing the color IDs on them. So real useful for little stuff like that or really anything that is bluetooth related uh next up a uh usb type c to oh lily this is not food but she took a real interest in this it's a usb type c to three and a half millimeter adapter uh now this is something that she ended up picking up off of aliexpress i believe which was a the best worst thing, uh, I'll just tell you all real quick, I accidentally gave her a little bit of an addiction to AliExpress. I've ordered stuff off there for years, it's been great, but I introduced her to it, and uh, she's had a real fun time all there. But recently she picked up a new phone, she was a lot like me where she was pretty much going to die with her headphone jack. But unfortunately, there is a. I'm going to get into a little bit of a tangent, but the phone industry kind of sucks right now if you want to keep a headphone jack. It's pretty much if you want a headphone jack on your phone, uh, like built into it, you either have to go with an outdated phone or you have to go with like a questionable, mostly unsupported or questionably supported um, low spec or even like lower mid tier spec phone from an odd company. It's not really a great time now at this point, especially with, you know, Samsung hasn't had um, 
headphone jacks in their phones for years. Of course, Apple hasn't. Uh, even Google, uh, even in their budget Pixel line, like the Pixel 6a, for example, no longer has a headphone jack. So uh, one harsh reality I am facing now is that my Pixel 4a is probably going to be the latest phone and the most n and the newest phone I'll own with a headphone jack because I'm pretty sure that the phone that I'm going to upgrade to, whatever it might be, will not have a headphone jack. So I'll finally have to say risk, like, you know, rip to that. Uh, rip in pieces, I guess. Either way, uh, she ended up facing the same dilemma. She ended up upgrading her phone. Uh, she's happy with it, but she still wants the headphone jack. So I end up putting her onto these, just a USB type C to three and a half millimeter adapters. Uh, now she ended up ordering them from AliExpress and, uh, tip to you all as well too if you are ordering just like little small stuff like this from china um it is a lot cheaper it does take a lot longer there's also a chance that it could break as well too whether it's going to break shortly after you use it or it could be dead on arrival my logic is typically if you're going to be getting something that is like small and affordable buy multiples so if you're going to get adapters like this get two of them get three of them get four of them just get a few of them not only you're going to have multiples of them available for different reasons whether you want to keep one like in your car in your gym bag in your backpack give one to a friend whatever it might be um, but also just as backups in case they do break so that's always my recommendation um, really if you're going to be ordering anything overseas like that and waiting a while by at least two uh so she ended up getting several of these she had like four or five of them so she was like long story short hey do you want one i said i'm eventually going to need one so sure thank you <laughs> uh little long story there but i like to be a storyteller the last thing the very last thing i'm actually going to open this up so y'all can clearly see it check this out i'm also going to move this out of the way because the shine kind of keeps bugging and getting to everything this here is actually a pretty nice one this is a sd2 vita now for anybody who does not know uh this here goes into the game card slot of a playstation vita and right in here a micro sd card goes in there now the idea would be that when you modify your vita you'll be able to as a, you'll, you'll be able to repurpose the game card slot as a different storage device that you can use. So what most Vita owners do is because the proprietary storage on there is so expensive and also limited, uh, they'll typically, if you have a PS Vita 1000, they'll get like, you know, a small memory card for that, like maybe like a four gig or something like that, the smallest one you can get just to do the basic stuff. And then at that point, you can migrate your install and everything else to a micro SD card easily and pretty affordably once the system is modified uh, people even you don't really have to do the memory card step uh, like I mentioned with a 2000 or a PSTV because each of those has one gigabyte of onboard memory uh, but either way you can easily and pretty affordably load this up with a 128 256 512 gigabyte card and you can put all your games all your apps all your settings all your configurations everything on there um, these devices are also pretty affordable as well too and pretty cheap um so she told me years ago actually before she met me uh she had wanted to modify her playstation vita um so she knows someone who has an aliexpress account and um but i guess before me and before she did uh so she asked them hey i want to mod my playstation vita uh well or i want to mod a vita eventually um she knew about the sd to vita so she asked lily what are you doing okay uh i'll just have her in frame either way she had asked um if they could pick up some sd to vitas for her and they did and because she actually knew and used my same logic with hey if you're gonna buy something pretty cheap like this from china and if you're gonna be waiting that long buy multiples no joke she bought five of them she bought five of these so she showed me and the reason why she never i i guess i'm revealing this now she never used any of them uh because after we had started dating at one point i actually ended up giving her a playstation vita that i ended up modifying and i already put a sd to vita on there with a big sd card and all that stuff uh so she was pretty happy with that so 
The best part was she never even got to use the SD to Vitas because then she never got around to getting a second Vita or a Vita TV. Uh, she never got to, she never modified her own main Vita and then she met me and then we started dating and then I got her the Vita. So at that point it's like, okay, now, since I have my own Vita and it's fully modded, I don't really need to use all these extra ones because, you know, she's not going to get a bunch of extra Vitas. That's more the thing that I do. <laughs> Uh, either way, either way, she didn't use them, in my opinion, for the best reasons here, but she asked me, hey, do you need one or two? And I was like, no, no, th thank you. Like, I'll, I don't need all of them. I don't need multiple. I'll just take one. Uh, so there we go. Uh, nice, wholesome story over how the hell I got another SD DeVita from my girlfriend of all things. So uh, those were some really nice freebies from her. Just amazing. Like, she's a keeper. <laughs> Anyways, that is about it for this episode of Thrifty Gaming Pickups. I did really go long-winded with the stories, but I did enjoy hanging out with you all, sharing these stories and all that fun stuff. Hopefully, you all enjoyed watching this. If you did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. Uh, and as I always say here, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Of course, if you like this video, yet again, like, if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine. Just do keep in mind though, if you dislike this video, you're gonna make this dog very, very sad. <laughs>